What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with Motorola Moto G Play 2023 Camera Tips and Tricks and Hidden Features. So in this video, I want to show you how to make the most out of all the various cameras on the Moto G Play 2023. So let's get started. Now the first thing I want to go over are all the various cameras that we're getting here with the phone. Because despite this being a lower end device, we actually have quite a few of them. So the first thing is, we have the front facing camera, which is 5 megapixels. Then, on the back of the device, we have a triple camera setup with a 16 megapixel main camera, a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera for portrait mode, and a 2 megapixel macro camera for close up images. So, to confirm for you, this device does support portrait mode for both the rear and front cameras. So, that is really awesome. And in addition to that, this phone does support 1080p video recording for the front and rear cameras as well. Now, heading over to the camera app, by default, it will pull up the main camera. So, there's how it looks right there. And then from there, you can go to this icon to access the macro camera. And then with the macro camera, you can get very close up and have things be in really good detail. Then from there, we can head over to the main camera once again, and then go over to portrait, and that will activate portrait mode. So with portrait mode, you can get those nice blurred out backgrounds. We can also flip around to the front facing camera to get portrait selfies here. And then if we want to, we can also do group selfies so it crops out slightly. And then another option as well is to take a standard selfie with no blurred background. So then from there, I want to show you a few things in the various menus. The first thing is, this button right there is for Google Lens. So if you want to use that feature, which it is pretty cool, you can do that by going over to there. Then on the right side here, we have the filters. So there's quite a few filters that you can choose from, and then it'll capture the photo with those filters. And you can see, the list really goes on here, so you can do all kinds of different ones. So that's pretty cool. We can also head over to portrait as I showed you to get those blurred out backgrounds again. Go over to this button right there to access the blur level. So if you want more blur, you can do that. If you want less blur, you can also make that adjustment too. We can then go over to pro mode and in pro mode, you can really make adjustments to a variety of different camera features. So you can adjust white balance and ISO for example, and quite a few other things too. We can then go over to the more tab here to access a few other options. So there's spot color, panorama, and time lapse. Let's try out spot color. So with spot color, you pick a color. So I'm going to pick green. And then you can adjust the intensity. So you can see on this end of it, it only will show green. And it won't show any of the other colors. So that's pretty cool. Or I can completely put that to zero for spot color. So kind of an interesting feature, certainly a cool way to kind of change up the images that you're capturing, but then we can get out of there and then head back over to the more tab. And another cool trick is that if you want to add any of these three to the main slider here at the bottom, just go to this pen tool. And then from there, you can pick up one of them and drag it in. And actually, if you want to remove portrait or pro mode, you can remove those and stick them in this regular extra menu here. So that's up to you. But when I go to done, you can see I now have spot color in this slider here at the bottom. And then one other thing I forgot to mention in pro mode is that up here, you can actually choose between JPEG, RAW, or RAW and JPEG. So essentially with RAW photos, you can import those into various software such as Adobe Lightroom, for example, and you can make further adjustments that you typically can't make with standard JPEG photos or even a PNG. Now back over in the regular photo mode, we have several toggles up top here. We have the full settings, which I'll show you in a little bit. We also have an option for HDR, so you can turn that off or have that on. Essentially with HDR, it takes multiple photos with different levels of white balance and essentially kind of meshes them together to give you a better looking image. So in general, that's not a bad feature to use. Also up here, we have the aspect ratio of the photo. So you can see by default, it is three by four, which is pretty standard for photos, but you can actually go here and tap on it once. It'll take you to nine by 16 or 16 by nine. That's great for thumbnails. You can tap on that one more time too to do the full aspect ratio of the phone. So pretty nice that we have those toggles there to customize that. We also have an option here for a timer. You can do three seconds, 10 seconds, or no timer. And then we also have an option for the flash. You're gonna flash off, flash on automatic, or you can have flash on all the time. So that's awesome as well. You can also swipe down here from up top and you get some more options too. However, overall, many of these are just repeats of what was in this top slider. You can see active photos is another option. That's kind of similar to Apple's live photos where it'll actually take a quick two second video, I think two or three seconds for the video that goes with the photo itself. That will take up quite a bit of space though on your phone, so just a warning for that. And it doesn't help either that the Moto G Play 2023 only has 32 gigs of internal storage. So overall, 
I probably wouldn't use that unless you want to for a specific photo. Now heading over to video mode, you can see that we have a few other toggles up top here. The first one is you can choose the aspect ratio. So in this situation, you can't do four by three, but you can do the full aspect ratio of the phone, or you can do nine by 16 or 16 by nine. So that's pretty good. We also have an option for the microphone. You can mute the mic if you want or have it on, which if you're making a video, you probably do want some audio. There's also an option for the flashlight or torch as they call it. So as you can see, I just activated that. And with the flashlight, we're able to basically have an extra light on at all times when recording a video. What's cool too is that in video mode, you can actually create macro videos. And that's not something that you always see with devices that have a macro camera. So that's definitely a very niche kind of specialty feature there, but I'm glad it is available. And then swiping down from the top here gives you those same various options. Now, in addition to that, there is quite a bit of good stuff hidden here in the menu option or the settings option. So going over to that gear icon, you can see all the various settings. So we'll start first with AI settings. And the only option for that is Google Lens. So if you don't find yourself using Google Lens and you want to disable it instead, and you don't want it to be in the camera app, you can turn that off. I would keep it on because I think it's a cool feature. It's really one of those features that I really should be using more often and I often just forget to use it. We also have photo settings. So going there, we have selfie photo mirror. So basically it flips the selfie around so that it looks a little bit more natural. I would go with the default, honestly, but you can mirror it if you want to. Also watermark. So if you wanna have a timestamp with all of your various photos, you can do that. Kind of similar to those old school film photos that you might take to CVS or something and get printed out. You can get the date there in the corner and time. There's also device watermark. So if you wanna add a little message at the bottom here, it will say that it was shot on the Moto G Play 2023. And then you can add in, say, Kevin Breeze. So you can see my name is then there at the bottom of the photo. So kind of interesting. I know that for me, I do tend to use the watermarks when I'm at least reviewing a phone because I don't want to mix up photos with other phones that I've captured photos from. So I don't want to, you know, put in my review the wrong type of photo from the wrong device. But heading back here, we have video settings. So going there, you can see that you can enable stabilization, but it's available only with time-lapse mode. So kind of interesting there. There's also capture settings. So we'll go there. Quite a few options here. The first one is tap anywhere to capture. So we'll give that a try. We'll go back here so I can tap anywhere. There we go. It is captured. Do it again. There we go. So really straightforward, definitely pretty helpful in certain situations. We also have the shutter sound, which you heard. If you don't want a sound when you're capturing a photo or video, which is kind of my preference really to not have that, you can turn that off there. So the phone will be completely quiet when taking photos or videos. There's also assistive grid. So if you're familiar with the rule of thirds, you can add that in here to get a grid to better kind of frame your photos. So that's pretty cool. Also in video mode, you get this too, so you can frame your videos. So it just kind of depends if that's something that's useful to you. You might want to give that a try. There's also the leveler. So if you want to have your content perfectly level here, you can use the leveler to achieve that and kind of help you out there. So that's awesome. And let's see, we also have keep last mode. So if you find yourself using a lot of special modes, maybe you use the filters quite a bit or a certain filter and you want that to be there when you come back, you can actually turn this setting on. So that might be useful or maybe not. I know some people prefer the defaults to pop up every time they pull up the camera app. So it kind of depends. We also have save settings. So go in there, you can save the location with your photo. And then we have some tutorials, an option to reset the camera app. So if you want to bring everything back to default, you can do that there. But essentially that's it here. Now there is one more thing that's really awesome that I want to show you they may not be aware of. And that is that you can actually set the power button to activate the camera app. So to do this, you're going to go to your settings. So go to your main settings for the phone. From there, you're going to go to search, type in gestures, let that load, go there under system gestures, go there. And then you're gonna see right there, double press power key. So by default, double pressing on the power key will pull up the assistant. However, you can set it here to actually launch the camera. So now that I have that set from anywhere in the phone, from anywhere throughout the operating system, I can just double press on the power button and it will pull up the camera immediately here. So that's very convenient. Let me try that one more time. So that's very quick. So definitely a really cool way to quickly get to the camera app on your device. So I definitely recommend switching over to that setting unless you really prefer to have the assistant be pulled up by double pressing on the power button itself. But this concludes my video on camera tips and tricks for the Motorola Moto G Play 2023. I hope you enjoyed this video and most importantly, hopefully you learned something new today. 
But if you like the video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And with all that said, I will see you in the next one. Take care and have a great rest of your day.